And that was all of the good things uh, by Janae Aiko. And also, uh, that song, uh, Touch, was by Omarion. And it's, uh, I, I used to like that song a couple years ago. There was a little, like, anti, opposite of a moonwalk dance they did. And uh, I, I would try to do it. wasn't able to get it. I was too heavy. So, so it's, hard to, it's hard for a heavy person, like, to do the moonwalk, too, because there's so much weight. It's hard to make your feet slide like that. So, uh, anyway, uh, shout-outs to Omarion. Um, one thing that happened with Amarion this weekend was he broke up with his longtime girlfriend, April Jones. I have no idea who she is, but I guess they were a uh, part of the cast of Love and Hip Hop. And, uh, this past Sunday, July 10th, they have two kids together. This past Sunday, Amarion announced the decision to split with his longtime girlfriend, April Jones, via Instagram. This is the only public statement I will make about a private matter. After this... I will not speak on or respond to any questions or comments on the matter. I thank everyone in advance for respecting my wishes to keep my family life private. He wrote, the beautiful and talented mother of my children for whom I hold the highest regard and respect, April Jones and I have mutually decided to end our relationship. He continued. Uh, Omari was very tasteful. And, and kind in his uh, approach. This could have been one of them uh, breakups, especially when you're on something like Love and Hip Hop. First off, I don't think any of it's real, but I mean, I, they did have two kids with each other, so I guess that kind of spilled over onto it, but he, he broke up with her, and it didn't become a mudsling match. It's not like Ciara, who is my uh, a favorite person that I like to hate or dislike strongly. Um... He did this with class. He just like, listen, it didn't work out. We not we in a good place. It's just not we're just not we're just not together anymore. And we want to keep the uh, incident private. So you know, I respect that. I ain't mad at that. I, I do have a, a couple questions though. One of my questions would be, um, why is it being reported that she cheated? And you, you, can't, you can't be mad at someone for wanting to know the answer to these questions if you have a show on Love... If you are part of the cast of Love and Hip Hop. You can't. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with if you just break up just to break up. That's okay. But even if she did cheat, I still think it was good that he kept it respectable. Uh, it didn't become... Anything, you know, he didn't throw any mud. And you know what the smart thing about doing that is? Even if she did cheat it, the reason why it's smart not to throw any mud is because eventually their kid, the two kids that they have, they're going to get older and they're going to want to know about their mother and their father and they'll be able to go online and, and watch their father's old videos and then they'll come across a uh, video of their father talking about how their mother was a, a, a hoe who slept with someone else. So I appreciate that. I, like, I appreciate the fact that he kept it classy and didn't bring all of it into the public eye, especially the negative stuff. The question is, uh, oh, the reason why he's much better than Ciara is because Ciara be doing stuff, man. Like, if, if Ciara was my baby's mother, I might lose it. I really would. I might, I might get a little uh, bent out of shape. Because one of the things that uh, Ciara did was put a post to Instagram video of her son kissing her new husband. Let that sink in. She has a, a, a child with the rapper Future. And her husband, quarterback in the NFL, Russell Wilson, she put an Instagram video of him kissing her, his son. Um, so as a man, right, so they're, so they're married, so that's fine. I, I, that still would bother me a little bit. Like if my wife and I got a divorce and she got married again, and I saw an Instagram video of him kissing one of my children, it would be a problem. Now, they, they reportedly, she kissed him on, he, they were kissing on the lips. That's a definite no. Like, I don't care married or not. There's no other man that's going to be kissing my children on the lips. I don't even kiss my kids on the lips. 
So I have a I have a little bit of problem with that. On the cheek, eh. But then it gets dicey. Like, so if 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 I got married to another woman and I, you know, we had our own place, and I had a, a child that was six years old, right, with someone else. And the kid says, Oh, can I sleep in the bed with you guys? I'm having nightmares. Like, would my wife be mad if I did that? Like I'm letting I, I, I'm letting my my six year old sleep in the bed, where my child, where where me and my new wife is. I don't think I would really be mad at that too, but still the kissing on the lips, I think I'd have a problem with that. I don't know. It's it's something about kissing on the lips. I I listen. There was Will. I remember this picture of Will Smith kissing his son on the lips, and it made me uncomfortable. So maybe it's just me. I don't, I don't, the kid, the kid, whole kids and adults kissing on the lips. I don't, even like young, young kid, like, okay, you know, like, so when you have an in, a toddler, right? Or a little baby still in diapers and you're bouncing, it's, oh, I want to kiss you so much. <laughs> like, okay, that's cool. When you get around the five, six age, six years old, all that lip service stuff stops. Kiss them on the cheek, keep it moving. What kind of ironically, you know what I don't understand is when people like when you go to meet a friend, right, who is the opposite sex and you go to kiss them on the cheek and instead of like actually touching your lips to their cheek, they just look straight and just make the kissing noise. What, what is the point of that? I don't get it. Do, do you when you uh, when you greet a, a friend of an opposite sex, do you kiss them like really on the cheek or do you like look straight ahead and just like. And make the kissing noise. I don't. I don't know. Like, if you want to text in or if you want a message on uh, Facebook Live, let me know because I don't. Th that's me. I think it's weird, and it might be just me. I, I like when I meet when I see someone. I've had this happen to me. Like, hey, how's it doing? Good to go get, get kiss someone in the cheek, and, and they just like look straight and just like make the kissing noise in the air. Like, why don't you just blow a kiss from across? Like, I don't understand it. Don't worry about who I kissed on the cheek, wife. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's how you greet some friends of the opposite sex, or you give them a hug. You know what? I, I didn't know. I didn't know there was a way to hug either. I'm slow on these things, on these social things. I didn't know there was a way to hug. Um, I, I my wife taught me. My wife taught me that when you hug someone, right, especially if they have boobs, that you got to do kind of this side hug thing when you hug them. I didn't know about that. I used to press all up against. A woman's boobs and squeeze them when I'm hugging them. But I guess there's like a certain respectable way a man's supposed to hug because it's, it, it, I guess a woman can take offense to you hugging them that way. Like, why hug in the first place? But I got boobs too. Like, I don't care if you, you rub up against my boobs. Ed, I don't feel like you've, uh, I don't feel like it's uh, crossing the line or anything. But, you know, some women, uh, are, some women are sensitive to that, I guess. So now I know whenever I go to hug someone, because I am a hugger. So I know when I go to hug someone, I kind of, step to the side and I let my gut hang that way out of the way out of, out of body touching reach but now I know also when I when I do that side hug thing I gotta also look to the side and kiss to the side too don't kiss them directly on the on the uh, cheek no women got a lot of daggone rules like you get offended like why I don't know don't embrace anybody that's what I think I don't think you should embrace anybody ever again because it, it, any way it could be perceived as wrong. And it's tough out here for August. So, I mean, how, I don't know. How do you join? How do you uh, meet up with people when you, like a friend that's uh, opposite sex, you just kiss them on the cheek? Do you kiss them on the lips? I don't know. I don't know how I got. The, oh, but either way, Sierra uh, doing all the stuff that she's doing with Russell Wilson. I'm, she, she filed a thing saying that she was concerned that... Uh, uh, future might have Russell Wilson killed if she keeps posting these Instagram videos and keeps like throwing these little subtle jabs at him and then taking them to court for crap. You know she's asking for it. No, I'm not saying it's justified, but I'm just saying. Like you can't like people use when you use things. No hugs for you then, Will. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. Like I try. I guess I try to do the side hug thing. And uh, 
the, the, thank you, Texter, for that. I tried to do the side hug thing and, you know, just a kiss on the cheek, but that's, I, I guess that could be perceived as wrong. I don't, I don't know. But still, um, doing the, doing the, what they, like the whole putting your child on Instagram, knowing that you have a child with another kid and uh, having them do things like, oh, look at his new father, take him here. Oh, look at his new father, this, do this stuff. It's like, it's weird to me. I don't know. I just don't like it. But I respect the way that Omarion broke up. They did. They just said that we're not together anymore. Uh, I'm going to keep it private. And so I respect how he did it. I wish they would uh, do it. Uh, I wish more people would do it and keep their business private like that. Like, I don't be sharing dirty stuff about, you know, exes and stuff like that because it ain't, it ain't no good. I'm too, I've done too much stuff too and I want to keep that stuff secret. Yes, I do. I want to keep it a secret. Uh, so in other news, uh, four cops reportedly walk out of WNBA game after players wear Black Lives Matter shirts. So this is what I'm talking about, right? If the police job is to serve and protect, it should be my job is to serve and protect, period. Not my job is to serve and protect unless you say something that I don't agree with and then I'm just going to walk out from doing my job of serving and protecting. The president of uh, Minneapolis Police Union Tuesday commended a quartet of officers who reportedly walked off their jobs providing security at a WNBA game on Saturday night after some players wore Black Lives Matter shirts calling for change after recent police shootings. The black warm-up t-shirts read, Change starts with us, justice and accountability on the front. The back of the shirts bore the name of Philandro Castile and Alton Sterling, two black men recently shot by police in a pair of controversial incidents. Black Lives Matter was also printed on the back, just below, a replication of the Dallas police shield. An anti-cop gunman shot and killed five Dallas officers on Thursday. Four officers, the four officers in Minnesota were off duty when they left their security positions, according to Lieutenant Bob Crawl, president of the Minneapolis Police uh, Federation, I commend the officers for it. Uh, Crawl told the Minneapolis Star Tribune that officers who were not identified also removed themselves from consideration to work future games at the Target Center for the Lynx. Others said they heard about it and they were not going to work the Lynx games. Good. I don't I, listen. I don't want them kind of those types of police officers uh, working anyway. If you if you only want to protect and serve when it's with people who share your agenda, share how you feel, then you know what you, you don't you shouldn't be a date. They shouldn't be cops. And for the police chief to even uh, commend them for it, like really, this is a, a free country. People have a right to have different opinions. But when you choose to be a public servant, you are a public servant, not for whom you choose to be a public servant to. So if you don't want to do the security job, that's fine, but you can't just accept the security job and then just walk out. Where they do that at? If players are going to keep their stance, all officers may refuse to work there. Yes, let that be known. If you think that uh, injustice and if you think that killing unarmed civilians is a bad thing, the police will not uh, protect you. That is the message that they're sending. It's insane. This, this is the world we live in. But uh, if we take the time to see that this is a human issue and speak out together, we can greatly decrease fear and create change. Moore said tonight, we will be wearing shirts to honor and mourn the losses of previous American citizens and to plea for change in all of us. Moore spoke during the nearly five-minute news conference about the Dallas shooting. She praised that the city's efforts on leading the way and de escalization training and other efforts that led to a noticeable drop in the number of shootings by officers in the past few years. No, that's not good enough. You can't say that they do anything wrong or... You are just, you know, it's, it's, it's sad. But that's where we are in, a, in, in this society. Speaking of uh, which, 
Uh, I know people kind of like get like you do a lot of belly aching when you start talking about the shooting in Dallas, right? It seems like the shooting in Dallas took place like a month ago. People talking about it so much, but it was only just this past weekend, and it's only Tuesday. But President Obama delivered strong remarks during Dallas Memorial. The President and First Lady made a trip to Dallas in order to attend the interfaith memorial service for the police officers who were killed last week. Applaud them on that. I'm glad they did show up for that because it, it is a it is important to show that all uh, that any time anyone dies unjustly, that it is important. So just because you're black does not mean that you're automatically happy that five police officers got killed. In such a heated time in our American history, all eyes have been on President Obama to see how he will handle such a national turmoil. However, during his speech, he gracefully and passionately addressed not just the city of Dallas, but the country as a whole. He was able to bring bridge the gap between the protesters and the officers. When speaking about the officers who died on that terrible evening, the president said, when they were assigned to protect and keep orderly a peaceful protest, they were upholding the constitutional rights of this country. Nods and gestures of agreement could be seen by the officers and politicians behind him as the president spoke of the duties and responsibilities of the brave men and women who acted that evening. Uh, and, and let me do that now. Those officers that were gunned down that night, they were not an enemy of Black Lives Matter. They were not an enemy of those who want social justice. What they were doing was their jobs of making sure that the peaceful protests, that nobody got hurt, that there wasn't anything crazy to happen, and those officers should be commended for it. They died trying to keep peace. Whether you like it or not, that's what they were doing. They were not trying to hurt anybody. They were not trying to bully anybody. They were not trying to uh, accuse, or they were not trying to... Uh, arrest, all they were doing was just making sure it remained peaceful. For a while, the protests went on without incident, said the president, despite the fact that police conduct was the subject of this protest. These men did their jobs like the professionals that they were, unlike the officers in Minnesota who walked off uh, their job because of uh, uh, someone wore a Black Lives Matter t-shirt. President Obama then took a moment to encourage and uplift the somber attitudes of the people of Dallas. He spoke directly to the city and said, I'm here to say we must reject such despair. We are not as divided as we seem. I know how far we've come against impossible odds. These words come from a man who has lived to see a much stronger and fiercer racism of a past time. It is clear that the president feels grief for the deceased officers Yet he also wants this to be a moment to unite rather than divide us. Finally, the president went on to thank Mayor Rawlings for his swift actions and left the crowd with words that we all should remember to live by. Let us love not with words or speech, but with actions and truth. So I applaud the president for this. I also applaud the five officers who lost their lives. It's and, uh, and it really is. Uh, an unfortunate incident. It was an unfortunate situation. No. But there, I don't know how we're going to address or fix this problem. I really don't. How, how are you, how does officers walking out of their job because someone said Black Lives Matter on a t-shirt help fix the problem, the relationship between police officers and uh, people of color, black people. That question is almost hard to understand is uh, how does Rich Omi Kwan forget the lyrics to uh, B.I.G.'s verse on Get Money at the Hip Hop Awards? Just saying. If you are there to, um, if you're you're there to give tribute to the man, 
how do you get his lyrics? I don't know. I'm just happy that the president is still, I mean, someone who can easily be, as someone who can easily let his uh, emotions take over and then go one way and uh, be one way too far, or be the other way too far. I'm glad the president spoke on the truths of the goodness of the people, such as those five police officers who were there keeping the protest peaceful. He was, they were allowing people to protest. How can you be mad at those police officers? Whether they believed in Black Lives Matter or not, they were there to protect those people that were saying uh, a Black Lives Matter, and they should be applauded for it. Definitely should not have lost their lives over it. And the president did a good job of pointing that out. The officers in Minnesota who walked out of the game, not really feeling that. I don't agree with it. Don't understand how they could get to the point where they would let their personal opinions uh, stop them from doing their job, which is to protect and serve. What if something happened? What if there was a riot in, the, um, in, in that, that, that Lynx game, the WNBA game? What if someone got really hurt? What if someone had a weapon on them at the WNBA game? And these officers, just because the, the players wore Black Lives Matter warm-up shirts, walked out. They wanted to make a message, and you know what? The message was loud and clear, but is that the message that they really wanted to send? Did they really want to send the message that in this free country, if you say what we don't like, you will not, we will not serve and protect you? Is that the message that they want to send? Because that's the message that I think a lot of people took. They should actually look to those uh, Dallas police officers who put their personal opinions aside and still protected the people as they were protesting, as they were exercising their right to freedom of speech. And you know what? Uh, I applaud those people too because the people in Dallas, they were not um, blocking highway traffic. They weren't breaking the law. They were peacefully protesting, which is their, is their right to, to, to do. So, I, you know, even the people. What was happening in Dallas before, that, on, before the unfortunate shootings was how everyone should be behaving. Peaceful protests are okay. That way you can encourage other people to vote for those who have your personal interests in mind. That's cool. I, I applaud that. I applaud those officers who who probably don't agree with everything that Black Lives Matter was saying. Hey, I don't agree with everything that Black Lives Matter says. But I still respect their right to uh, their free speech. So how can you have a problem with that? That's the, that's the thing. I don't understand how anyone would have a problem with that. So I uh, really do applaud the president for his uh, 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 speech. Also, George W. was there. W. When he was giving his speech, it was almost nostalgic for me because it was like, man, I haven't heard him give a speech in such a long time. So I enjoyed it. I really did. Let's take a break. We'll be back on the one, two, three, four, five o'clock channel. If you're not familiar, please get familiar. <laughs> 